We are pain, that's all. We are God in our history. Yo guys! This is Yuruzi and this is part 8 of What If Naruto Was The Red Flash. Naruto finds out about Uzumaki clan when he was 4 years old. Naruto swears to rebuild the home of his clan and finds all the family he has left. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel and check the author in the description. Let's start. Chapter 47, 5 out of 9. In the village hidden in the leaves, the Sandame Hokage Sarutobi Hiruzen was seated in a large chair in front of a large table with multiple people sitting along the sides. They were the most influential people in the village, from clan heads to wealthy business people. The civilian side was on the right whilst the shinobi side was on the left. Hiruzen's teammates Koharu and Hamura were seated on his right and left. The god of shinobi cleared his throat, whatever idle conversations that had been going on stopped. Hiruzen stood up, as you all know, the Chunin exams are soon to begin, this time it will be in our village, he paused, now as you know, that means that other genin will be coming from their respective villages. We are aware of this Hokage-sama, why have you called upon this meeting if you are just stating what we already know? Hayashi Hyuga asked the elderly Kage. I received a request from Kyumo for two of their genin teams to participate. Everyone was quiet at this, while they weren't currently fighting each other, Kyumo and Kanoha had always been enemies in the past. In fact, they hadn't heard anything important from Kyumo for quite a while. For them to send two genin teams meant they were top genin. Is there anyone of interest in either team? Inoichi Yamanaka asked. Hiruzen nodded his head yes, there is, a young girl around the age of 14 and a half, his name is Jitego Gakano. Gasps came from the civilian side while the shinobi only had widened eyebrows, everyone knew of the Gakano clan. They were known for their red lightning bloodline. But Hokage-sama, the Gakano clan only have three members, and none of them is a child. A fat, balding civilian by the name of Kado exclaimed. It appears there is one more, not only that but from what I know is that the Reikage himself has trained Jitago, Hiruzen said. He knew, according to Jiraiya, that they had sent the Jinchuriki of the demon cat as well, but Danzo didn't really need to know that part. He hoped Ghost could start the clean plan, if everything could go according to plan, Danzo would soon pay for what he had done. Everyone couldn't hide their surprise, to find out the Rakage had a student under his wing they were just now finding out about. It was quite a surprise. A man covered in bandages and his arm in a sling spoke up, Hiruzen, I suggest that when the boy comes for the exams, we send in a team to eliminate or capture him. He no doubts knows things that would be beneficial for Kanoha. The third glared at the man, no Danzo, we will do no such thing. The Chunin exams are to support and maintain peace. If we were to kill the boy, then the Rakage will probably suspect something and would no doubt declare war with us, a war we could not win as few would side with us if they thought we weren't below the idea of killing a child during the Chunin exams. The Nine Tails attack and the death of Minato have wounded us severely we would be walking into our own graves, Sarutobi said. Bluntly where Danzo scowled. The exams will begin in a week, and I will be meeting with the Jonin senseis to see what genin of ours will be participating, if I am correct most of your children will be participating, Sarutobi said to the clan heads where they nodded their heads. I have the belief that they will do well in the exam, the will of fire burns strong in them. I have a feeling this exam will be quite interesting. With that said and done, the Hokage left the room with the others getting up from their chairs and leaving the room too. Fo. She, her friend Ashera and the third member of their team, a boy named Akashu, arrived in Kanoha. Fu could hardly control herself at this point. Fu had grown and changed since the last time she saw Naruto Kuen. She now had straight, spiky hair that was a distinctive mint green in color that almost reached her shoulders and framed her face and had tan, caramel colored skin. She wore a white, sleeveless midriff shirt and a short matching skirt and white shinobi sandals, along with bandages under her shirt that went halfway down her stomach and from her skirt halfway down her thighs and a pair of long, white armlets. She could see the gates from where they were her face a big smile, her legs jumping up and down, she couldn't contain herself, it had been more than five years since she last saw Naruto. She wondered how he looked now, was he still as cute as she remembered him? Just the thought of him made her cheek blush, turning pink. She wondered how strong he was now, his face and cute whiskers, his ocean blue eyes, which made her feel a tingle in her stomach, almost like butterflies in her tummy, how long his hair was now, she wondered about his muscular body. 
Ashera, on the other hand, looked at her friend with a raised eyebrow. While she too couldn't wait to meet Narukuin, she was holding herself back. In the past five years, she has grown into a beautiful woman, buxom and beautiful, with white skin, large purple eyes and long, thick red hair that falls in ringlets to the middle of her back. She has full lips, a husky voice, and round ripe breasts. Her face was shaped like a heart, small forehead and a small straight nose, sharp like a blade, wearing a red shirt with secret seals drawn in her shoulders. A small opening in her chest showed her cleavage, the sleeve of her right hand was cut open up to her elbow, the sword of her mother, Daka Burrito, tightened behind her back. She was wearing darkened red pants that had dark lines around her thighs that reached to her feet. Dark sandal shoes with a small dagger hidden in a small seal in the left sandal. Small pouches tightened around her hip, filled with sealing scrolls. The phoenix seal in her right wrist had grown a great significance. Now she had the wings and a small head of a phoenix. The seal hadn't fully appeared yet, but Asha hoped to be able to summon a phoenix soon. In her mind was what Rashi told her two years ago. There's another Uzumaki, but his chakra is dark. Ashera wasn't sure how could Uncle Rashi know about it and why would the chakra be dark, she had figured that whoever the other Uzumaki was, he must hate what the villagers had done to Uzumaki clan. Asha couldn't wait until she could tell Naruto about Uncle Rashi, he wasn't her uncle by blood, but the older man had said to her that she could call him uncle if she wished to. Ashera escaped her thoughts when they reached the gates of Kanoha, the two guards eyed them and their sensei before letting them walk inside, but Ashera could tell that they mainly focused on her almost as they recognized her from somewhere. She wondered why but decided that it didn't matter much. Did you see her hair? She looks like the Red Death, one of them said to the other shinobi, the second one nodded his head in agreement. Soon they reached the hotel where they would be staying, walking inside the room, their jonin turned to look at them. You can walk around and explore the village, but I want no problem whatsoever from any of you, jonin demanded with a strict tone pointing the finger at each one of them. Ashera rolled her eyes in slight annoyance. Ikashu looked to be with his mind completely somewhere else, while Fu was her usual happy self, her bright and cute smile not leaving her face. Taku-sensei, you know we would never do anything, Fu said innocently. Their sensei had a tick mark on his forehead, while true Fu never really caused problems, but her happy attitude was really annoying sometimes. Ah, Fu, just don't go around making friends, and we will be okay, Ikashu said, already half asleep on the couch. Right now, their sensei was even more annoyed and marched towards Akashu and grabbed his left ear tightly. He started yelling in pain while their sensei leaned closer to his right ear. For the last time, don't sleep, their sensei yelled at his ear, making him hear an ongoing strange sound on his brain, while Fu was giggling cutely. After a few seconds, the sound went away. Fine. Just don't be surprised when I don't grow enough, Akashu said in defeat. Their sensei nodded and left the room. Ashera turned to look at Fu and noticed that Ishaku had already fallen into a deep sleep and was snoring like there was no tomorrow. Asha gestured for Fu to follow her. Walking outside, they jumped at the top of a roof to look at the village, she could see houses as far as the eye could see, the hidden leaf village was indeed huge, and the most fantastic thing to Asha was the statue of the previous Hokage. Wonder how it looks from up there, Fu said, looking up at the statue of the fourth Hokage. Ashera wondered if Naruto had taken a lot after his father's looks, while his hair was all from Kushina Uzumaki, the Red Death, but she wondered if his handsome face was from his father. Can you sense him? Fu suddenly asked Asha, the young redhead escaped her thoughts. She focused and could feel a significant spike of chakra coming from close to their location. Before she could tell Fu to follow her, the Jinchuriki girl was jumping towards the location. Asha soon followed behind her. This way, Chomei tells me she can feel the furball from that location, Fu informed her, pointing a finger towards a place between a few buildings. Asha nodded in understanding and wondered what could make Naruto raise his chakra and if she would need to protect him. Naruto. Mother will have your blood, but before Gara could do anything, two voices interrupted them. OJ Narukuin, always searching for trouble. You haven't changed. Naruto didn't need to look to know who was talking. Has been a long time, Asha-chan and Fu-chan. Everyone looked up in time to see two girls jumping down behind the Suna shinobi, Naruto recognized both of them immediately. Fu looked much cuter and prettier than ever before, her smile on her face. While Ashera looked gorgeously beautiful, but Naruto noticed the glare she was giving the Jinchuriki of Shikaku. Before Naruto could talk to them, Fu threw herself in his arms like an arrow, almost making him fall to the ground. Is good to see you Naruto-kun. She said softly on his ear while rubbing her cheek against his, usually Naruto would hug her back but couldn't help but blush, from her close contact, 
Her skin sent shivers in his whole body like electricity, she smelled like fresh mint, her soft breasts felt good against his chest, and Naruto felt a sensation on the middle of his body. Fo, perhaps you should let him go before you crush him, Ashera said in annoyance while still keeping an eye on the redhead Jinchuriki. Ashera could feel the Jinchuriki inside him and wondered which one he had but what bothered her was his ice glare. Filled with hatred and anger and a slight hint of sadness, Naruto pulled away, smiling brightly at Fu, who smiled back. It's so good to see you, Fu-chan. You look amazing, he said, grinning from ear to ear. Fu blushed from his compliment, something that everyone noticed. His attention turned to look at the redhead girl walking closer to him. Asha, you have changed, you look beautiful, Naruto said with a slight wink that made her blush. Ashera beamed at him and threw her arms around him, hugging him close to her. Her height same as his, she could feel his heartbeat beating faster for her and Fu. Naruto felt the strong scent of nature in her, a fresh scent, the same he felt whenever he was close to a river. Ashera closed her eyes and felt the strong build body beneath his clothes, the feeling of his muscular build made her feel something, funny. Pulling away, she looked at his blue eyes for a second before they all turned to look at Gara, who looked angry. Naruto took a step forward thinking that he might try anything. Why do you look so gloom Shikaku-kun? We are all friends here, Fu said, smiling, leaning closer to Gara. With that said, the San Shinobis froze in place. They were sure right now that nothing could stop Gara from going berserk, ruining the mission before it even began. On the other hand, Sakura looked ready to run away from the murderous glare from the Chibi Jinchuriki. He released his KI, which made Sakura fall to her knees, barely able to breathe. Thankfully, Kanoamaru and his friends had left before this could escalate. Tamari and Kankuro were shaking like a leaf and felt like they had returned in time when their little brother had first lost control. The images of what Gara did many years ago were in their minds. While Fu was smiling, she was prepared if one tail Kun wanted to fight them, Ashera moved her hand on the pommel of her sword while Naruto looked relaxed. It seems it is true, even allied villages act like assholes towards each other they all turned to see a bunch of new faces, and Naruto couldn't help but grin. Is there any gathering that I don't know about? All five bijou asked at the same time. One. What do you mean, mother? Gara asked, focused on the new faces while still being wary of the silly girl. Don't do anything right now, the girl with the ponytail is the damn cat, while the one with big black eyes is Hachibi Shikaka spoke in his head, and Gara nodded while still feeling a strange feeling now that he was surrounded by four people who were just like him. Two. What do you mean, Nibi? Yujito asked while looking at the handsome man in front of her. While it slightly irked her to see him with two other women, she still liked what she saw. Knowing what her Jinchuriki was thinking, usually, she would tease her, but right now. The situation was a bit serious. The hot one is number nine, the short one with a large strange bag tightened to his back is number one, and the girl with orange eyes is number seven but don't underestimate any of them. I can tell each one of them at least talks with their respective Jinchuriki, Nibi warned. Seven. What do you mean, Chome? Fu asked happily to make new friends, especially to meet new people that are like her. The hungry girl is Matatabi, and the stupid one is Gyuki, Chome replied with a hint of happiness to meet her brothers and sister again after such a long time. 8. What is that you might mean? Are you talking about the angry fox or the cocky number one be asked, moving his hands around like an idiot? Hachibi sighed, tired of his stupid rap, and it was worthless. Yes, you baka, but don't lose your focus. The redhead fox is not to be taken lightly, Yuki warned, hoping that the warning would actually go through his head for once. Is good to meet you, Naruto said, taking a step closer. Miss 2 and Mr. 8, he stated, grinning. Sakura looked confused about what was happening, while Tamari and Kankuro looked horrified, Gara, on the other hand, had a strange creepy smile on his face. I'm 9, Furball wants to say, hi, Naruto said, earning a growl from Karama. Why would I say, hi? I'm the Kyubi. Why should I care about my worthless brothers and sisters Karama screamed in his head. Naruto chuckled slightly. B looked genuinely surprised to hear that apparently, Mr. Nine was talking with his host. It seems Karama has, changed. That's new. Never saw that one coming, Hachibi stated while Nibi was thinking the exact words with Yujito. Knowing they hadn't introduced themselves yet, Yujito walked first. My name is Yujito, the idiot behind me is B-sensei. My name is Fu. Unlucky 7. It is amazing to meet new friends. My name is Naruto. It is nice to meet you all. My name is Killer B. 
Hachibi and I stick like a bee, B said with a strange tone and voice that Naruto didn't quite understand him, while Yujito was shaking her head. You said your name is Fu. I will enjoy spilling your blood, Gara threatened with a cold look. Fu just laughed it off and leaned closer. I don't like to fight friends, but if you hurt my best friends, you will find that you won't like the results, Fu replied, smiling, but her eyes looked like a darker orange. And a darker aura had surrendered her, Ashera recognized the chakra as Komi's chakra. Gara kept his cold glare, he glanced at Naruto before walking away from them, followed by his siblings. The dark aura around Fu disappeared, and she turned around with the same smile as if nothing had happened. Yujito was about to say something to Naruto when they saw Samui walking towards them. Sensei, come on, she shouted at them. Good to meet you, I hope we meet again, Mr. Nine, B said and jumped away. See you later, handsome, Yujito said with a wink making Naruto blush. Now that things had finally settled down, Naruto turned to Asha and Fu. How about some ramen? Naruto asked to hope to catch up with Fuchan and Asha-chan. They both nodded immediately and followed Naruto behind, talking with him. When they left, Sakura was still left and looked angry, she couldn't believe that the redhead and the blonde girl were so much prettier than her, she could only thank the gods that Sasuke wasn't there. Kakashi. So, what are we going to do today? Kakashi mused, glancing around her apartment. Finished with her breakfast, Anko pushed her plate aside, resting her elbow on the table. Well, I have been pretty lax with my training lately. She grinned. What do you say to a sparring match? You want to spar with me? Why not? She was an excellent jonin, but to be honest, Kakashi doubted her ability to beat him. Not many had claimed that distinct honor, and those who had been dangerous enemies. You're not scared, are you? She asked, her grin turning into a smirk. Now, why would I possibly be scared of a sparring match with you? It isn't like I'd ever lost. She stood and took her dishes to the sink, feeling a new satisfaction when she felt his eyes following her again. Then you have nothing to worry about, do you? What's the harm in accepting? You'd only get angry with me again. Are you sure I didn't know you for an arrogant? It's not arrogance. It's honesty. Each time I give you a fair warning, and each time I win, which leaves you upset with me. Anko placed her hands on the table next to him and stared down into that lone, gray eye. Put up. Or shut up. Heaving a great sigh, Kakashi stood from the table. If you insist. I'll meet you at the fifth training ground in 30 minutes. Oh, I look forward to it. Anko arrived early, as per her usual, and Kakashi. Well, he was, of course, late. By another 30 minutes, to be exact. Anko grew more and more impatient as the minutes ticked by until finally, she decided to practice her already perfect aim by littering the trees around the clearing with shuriken and kunai knives. When Kakashi finally showed up, he had the audacity to look guilty. Sorry, I'm late. I was. Oh, save it. You're not sorry, and you never have a good excuse. You're habitually late, and you always will be. He blinked at her. Excuse me for trying. She gave a knowing smile, one hand on her hip. So, are we going to do this or what, Kashikun? Whenever you're ready to lose, Anko-chan. She smirked. After retrieving her kunai, as well as her shuriken, Kakashi and Anko took their stances. Truth be told, Anko had been looking forward to facing off against Kakashi for quite some time. She knew he was a skilled and powerful ninja. She'd seen it with her own eyes. It was different from being on the edge of fighting him herself, however. Part of her feared she may be beaten, but the other part was simply anxious to clash with the fierceness that was Kakashi of the Sharingan. Although he did not lift his headband to reveal his left eye, she could see the seriousness in his right one, in the hard lines of the visible portion of his face, and in the way he looked up at her from under his low brow. Even from across the clearing, she could feel his ferocity as he geared up to give this match everything that he had. She had come to know his more casual side. Now she was eager to experience his raw power. She licked her lips and grinned. This is gonna be fun. When Anko made the first move, the battle was on. Like all of the other jonin, Kakashi knew that despite her small stature, Orochimaru's former student was not to be underestimated. She was fast and eerily skilled with both close and far-range combat. To say that Kakashi had his hands full was putting it lightly, though he had no doubts that he would win. They were pretty even in terms of skill and just when one of them thought they had the other beaten, the tables would turn. Kakashi had to admit that Anko was quite unpredictable. Her mind worked quickly as she found a way to counter almost every move he made. 
She was a strong fighter, and when they clashed, he looked into her eyes and admired the fire that burned within them. Beautiful. He caught himself staring into those eyes just a little too long, and he managed to jump away from her before she threw her leg out to swipe his from under him. Fire style, fireball jutsu. Anko leapt out of the way just in time as flames consumed the clearing. Kakashi waited until all the fire had dissipated, hoping he'd gotten her with that attack, but he was disappointed to see that she had evaded him yet again. He barely had time to blink when he felt her chest against his back, her kanai at his neck. You've gotta be quicker than that, Kakashi, she chastised him mockingly. Anko was immensely enjoying their match. Their heat, passion, energy, power, and ferocity, they told the tale of Kakashi's true strength and prowess. They were also telling of the man's virility, and the reality that Kakashi was a man among men only elevated her heart rate and got her hot under the collar. Turning around, their eyes met again, and this time, Anko pulled up his mask and kissed him fully on the lips, Kakashi was caught by surprise but kissed back just as eagerly. Anko put her legs between his legs, feeling his hard cock against his pants. Pulling away, they looked at each other's eyes, breathing heavily. In my apartment, Naruto. The streets of Kanoha were busy, because of the Chunin exams many ninjas from foreign lands came to participate, but mostly tourists and people who came to see the finals that would start after a month. They were still time before the final exam started but some people have come early to see everything. These were the best times for any kind of business in Kanoha, from restaurants, weapon shops, decoration shops, picture shops, and many others. The streets were buzzing with people walking around, and in one of the streets, Naruto, Ashera, and Fu were walking around and checking out the shops around the village. How have you been you two doing without me? Naruto asked looking at Fu. It has been a bit boring without you Naruto, but Asha made sure for me to always be busy with training, I can't wait to show my new jutsus Fu almost shouted at the end making many people stare at them with raised eyebrows. I missed you too as well, especially your happy attitude Naruto replied with a cheeky smile that made Fu blush. Has anything interesting happened? Ashera asked leaning closer to Naruto who blushed furiously from her close contact, not mentioning, Naruto had noticed that she had grown in the right places. No, no no no, stop it. I'm not like Tojiji, Naruto thought trying to distract himself. Well, many things have happened but I will start from the very beginning. But first, let's reach Ichiraku Ramen Naruto stated as they keep walking towards Ichiraku. Both Fu and Asha wondered just how good this restaurant was, Naruto had mentioned it many times the last time he was at Taki, with enthusiasm, they soon reached the restaurant. Walking inside, Tuchi turned and smiled when he noticed Naruto walking inside followed by two girls. OJ Naruto is good to see you, my boy, he said smiling and walking over to them. Naruto returned the smile and took a seat along with Fu and Asha, taking their seats, Naruto shake his hands with Tuchi. Is good to see you, sorry for not visiting for a while, being busy with missions Naruto said with a sad smile but Tuchi just laughed and patted him on the shoulder. Don't worry Naruto, just grow strong, healthy, and happy. That's what's important he replied before turning his attention to the two girls. Who are you, friends? He asked with a small smirk and teasing tone that made Naruto blush and started rubbing his hair nervously. No, I, they're just friends. She's Fo, and she's Ashera Naruto introduced them pointing at them. Hoping they wouldn't be more teasing. Fu waves her hand with a big smile on her face. Is a pleasure to meet you Mr. Tuchi Fu replied happily. Is good to meet you Mr. And I wanted to personally thank you for treating Naruto kindly when he needed most Ashera said with a small bow of respect. Tuchi was touched by her words. Is was no problem miss. Naruto is just like everyone else. And not mentioning our favorite customer just then I am walked from behind the restaurant carrying an empty plate. But her blank face lightened up like a candle when she noticed Naruto. Naruto before the redhead could even process a response, he was engulfed by a bone-crushing hug. Is so good to see you Naruto kun a jame continued hugging him tightly. Naruto's face turned blue, AJ. I can't he tried to say, noticing his discomfort a jame pulled away from Naruto who drank a whole glass of water and still trying to catch his breath. I'm sorry Naruto, she said still smiling, but then she noticed the two girls. The green girl was patting his back while the other one was glaring daggers at her. Forming a smirk on her face, I see, you have been busy Naruto if I had known. I would have brought some candles for your date she said cheekily, making the three of them blush. Naruto and Fu tried to say that it wasn't really like that, while Ashera was silent. Now, let's prepare them some ramen Tuchi suddenly said slamming his hand together and asked each one of them what they wanted. After taking their order, Fu nudged Naruto, he turned his head to Fu who whispered only for three of them to hear. Hey, Naruto, 
How does this guy cook with his eyes closed all the time? Fu asked since she noticed that his eyes were closed, for a moment she thought he was blind. Ashera nodded her in agreement since she too asked herself the exact same thing. Naruto just shrugged his shoulders, since he too had no idea how he could actually do that. I have no idea, perhaps he has some kind of secret dojutsu Naruto suggested, not giving that much thought into it. Shortly after, Ayam brought three big ramen bowls and three candles. For your first date, she said smiling while she lighted each candle and walked away but not before giving Naruto a wink. Understanding the awkwardness between them, Ashera cleared her throat. So what has happened since you left Taki? Ashera asked. Naruto mentally thanked Asha for breaking the awkward silence. Well, chapter 49, A Song for Love. Naruto. Well, after I arrived back, I started the academy, Naruto started, and both looked at him, waiting for him to say more. So Naruto started describing how the academy was, Ashera was happy to hear that Naruto had friends in the village. The redhead had told both Fu and Asha about his friends back at the village, Naruto had stated that they had most likely forgotten him by now or maybe had started hating him like everyone else. So when Ashera heard he actually had friends, she felt relieved, Fu just smiled with her eyes closed and ate a piece of bacon from her ramen. Naruto soon explained what was taught in the academy, which caught the attention of Asha. Wait, what about Fuinjutsu? Or did they start learning it the last year, Asha asked, speculating that they probably saved Fuinjutsu to be taught in the last year since it was the hardest shinobi art to be taught. Naruto sighed and shook his head in denial, looking at Asha. No, they didn't teach Fuinjutsu in the academy. I asked Irika sensei once, and he told me that Fuinjutsu art had been removed from the school teaching program 10 years ago, Naruto explained and returned to his ramen. This caused both Asha and Fu to raise an eyebrow in confusion. The academy in Taki taught them Fuinjutsu level 1 at the fourth year until the last year, one of the exams to become a genin asked from the student to seal any weapon in a scroll. The redhead couldn't fathom how they thought they could do without Fuinjutsu. By removing it from the school program, they had dug their own grave. If anyone in academy were a prodigy in Fuinjutsu, they wouldn't be able to know that unless someone introduced it to him, her. While Fu was thinking the same thing, she wasn't exactly the best when it came to the art of Fuinjutsu, but being friends with Ashera for almost a decade, she reached level 2 in Fuinjutsu. Drinking the whole bowl with ramen, Naruto ordered a second one, soon followed by Asha and Fu. This is delicious, Chef Sama, Asha complimented the man, who smiled at her. Oh, thank you, it is always good for a chef to know that his art is appreciated, he responded and soon started preparing more ramen for his customers. What happens later? Fu suddenly asked, looking at Naruto, for a moment, the Uzumaki didn't understand what she meant but soon realized. Oh, well. Naruto gave a quick summary of his four years in academy, including getting a sudden visit from his godmother, and that he was living in the Senju compound now. Fu felt good to know that Nero had a family now, someone to stay with. When Narukuen had left Taki, she had been worried that he would suffer from his loneliness and that would change him, but she felt her heart smile knowing Nero wasn't alone anymore, in this village. Naruto soon told them about Mizuki trying to brand him as a traitor of the village, after that, he told them about the numerous D-rank missions they needed to do, like capturing a demon cat named Tora, what caught the attention of both girls was. You can't believe, this one time, Sakura was trying so hard to capture the cat, so when the cat jumped from a branch to another branch, Sakura flew like an arrow towards her, catching her mid-air, but they looked down to see they were falling in a bush full of nettles. She then started screaming of how she would need to wash and clean to be good looking again, Naruto finished with clear annoyance in his tone. Asha almost felt bad for the poor girl, almost. Naruto told her that she was an annoying girl who still held her head above the clouds, always screaming how this Sasuke guy was her true love or some bullcrap like that. Fu, on the other hand, nudged Naruto gently, making him turn to her. How old exactly is that, cat? You said Tsunade-sama had chased the cat as well. So that begs the question how old is she? Fu asked, wondering. Naruto just shrugged his shoulders, not knowing the answer. Who knows, I asked Tsunade Bachan the same question, but she just laughed and said, I don't know myself, all I remember that cat had been around even when my grandfather was alive, according to Sarutobi sensei Naruto explained, and they returned to eating the second bowl of ramen. After another hour of eating, they were finally done. 30 bowl Naruto. Next time I will beat you, Ashera stated as they were walking away from Ichiraku. Fu turned to them, thank you for the delicious food, Tuchi-san, she said, smiling and waving at them, Naruto and Asha did the same before they turned and decided to visit other places in the village. Naruto-kun, you told us, 
that Kanoha had a beautiful sunset from the top of the Hokage Mountain, Fu said, walking close to Naruto. Well, yes, we can go once it is close to sunset, Naruto said, agreeing and looking at the sun still high in the sky. If he had to guess, he would say it was around 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. Very well, I want to see other stores around the village, Fu suggested, and they soon started making their way towards the other stores of the village. While walking there, Asha noticed a few cold stares towards Naruto, she leaned closer to him, and her other hand was resting on the small punch around her thighs that carried several seals with weapons. Naruto noticed her tense muscles and grabbed her hand with his making her cheeks slightly blush. Holding his hand made her feel like a fire was turning inside, her tummy felt funny, like butterflies. She knew what it was, and her eyes went to his defied muscles around his arm. His clothes covered his stomach, she knew he was very muscular and wondered just how much stronger Naruto had gotten since the last time. Just the thought of his body made her cheeks blush even more, turning crimson red. Don't worry about that, they can send their hatred towards me as much as they want, but they will never be as happy as I am right now, Naruto responded, giving her a reassuring, beautiful smile. Fu felt touched to know that Naruto was happy because of her and Ashera. Suddenly Ashera remembered something that she had wanted to ask Naruto for some time now. Naruto, do you know if Jiraiya-sama is in the village? She asked while smiling slyly with a husky tone. This caused Naruto to raise his eyebrows for two reasons. What was up with that smile and that tone? Why his godfather? Naruto knew Tojiji had taught Asha a few things about Fuinjutsu and wondered if she wanted to be taught more since Jiraiya was a master in Fuinjutsu. The question caused Fu to sigh and roll her eyes in annoyance. Naruto noticed this and saw her murmuring something under her breath. Oh no, both Kurama and Chomei thought at the same time. Why? Naruto asked with insecurity in his tone, a small part of him dreaded what the reason could be. Ashera put her hand on a pouch behind her and pulled out a book written by Jiraiya. I wanted to know when he would release the new edition of Ika Ika books? Ashera asked, holding the cursed book in her hands in front of her chest. This caused Naruto and Kurama to freeze in place. For a long moment, Naruto was sure he had heard his friend wrong, he closed his eyes tightly, almost expecting it to be a bad dream, and once he opened them, he would see that it was just that. Opening them, he saw Asha still holding the book in her hands and smiling innocently towards him, for some reason, that made Naruto's blood turn cold as ice. He opened his mouth to speak, to say anything, but no words were coming out, the only thing coming out were a few whimpers. Finally, understanding this was true and not a dream. What? What? Naruto and Kurama screamed out loud, gaining the attention of many people around them. Fu covered her ears with her hands shaking her head, knowing this reaction would come. When Ashera first started reading the stupid books a few months ago, Fu had been wondering if the books were notes and tips to help in Fuinjutsu since Ashera has been this much invested only in Fuinjutsu, sure she trained her sword fighting, her ninjutsu, and her genjutsu a little, but nowhere near the level of Fuinjutsu. When Fu had taken the book at night and opened it to read it, within the first five pages, she understood what the book was all about and had screamed in the middle of the night, causing Ashera to wake up and look around for anyone immediately. It had taken half an hour for Ashera to understand that Fu had screamed because of the book. Now, Fu was waiting for the upcoming storm between the two. Why are you reading that garbage? Naruto half shouted pointing the finger at the book. This caused Ashera to clench her teeth. Fu covered her ears again. This is not garbage. This. Is. Archie shouted. Naruto looked even more confused and lost of words, looking at Asha, who was performing some pre-rehearsed victory dance complete with confetti and a large sign that read. This is true art, in big, bold letters. Fu had closed her eyes in complete shame, shaking her head, looking at her now. Both Kurama and Chomei were thinking the same thing. Matatabi and her would be perfect for each other. Naruto groaned after hearing Kurama saying that. He started murmuring something about killing a particular toad. Okay, enough with this, as for Toad Gigi, he's out of the village right now, Naruto said, lowering Ashara's hands. She whined that Jiraiya Sensei wasn't around but hoped he would be around until the end of Chunin exams. Seeing that the situation was back to normal. Fu walked over to them and put a hand on both of their shoulders. Turning to look at her, she smiled. How about we visit the shops now she suggested, and they started walking towards the shops. Fu saw many shops, but none had anything that interesting. Some had souvenirs. Soon, they visited the fifth shop filled with different decorations. This one had a large red carpet on the floor decorated to look like flames. Walking inside, Fu saw small necklaces behind glass. She eyed each one and saw one that caught her attention. This one looked like a butterfly with green wings and a blue body. 
She opened the glass and took it in her hand to examine it more closely, her face beamed. She was turning to Naruto, who was helping Ashera with something. Narukuen, can you help me to wear it? Fu asked innocently and showed her puppy eyes. Naruto chuckled nervously, his face blushed, he couldn't help but see how cute Fu looked right now, nodding his head, he walked over to her and helped her with the necklace. Fu beamed after he was done and turned around. How does it look? She asked, hoping that Naruto liked it. It looks beautiful, Fu, it makes you look even cuter, Naruto blurted out without thinking, his face turned as red as his hair, while Fu spread her arms and hugged him, slightly rubbing her cheek against his. Just her skin alone made Naruto feel a burning sensation on his middle, hugging her back. He pulled away. It suits you, Fuchan, Ashera complimented. Soon Fu paid for the necklace, even though Naruto had wanted to pay it himself, but Fu had assured him that it was no problem whatsoever. Walking outside, they resumed walking around the shops. How about we go to my home? I'm sure Shizanchan and Bachan would be happy to meet you too, Naruto suggested earning a nod from both of them. As they were walking away, Naruto felt three chakra levels hiding behind them. His eyes roamed around and saw that there were barely any civilians in this part of the street, turning around. Come out. I know you're there, Naruto shouted. Ashera narrowed her eyes at the three genins walking from behind a tree. One of them jumped from the tree while the two others came out from behind the tree. With a single glance, Naruto saw they looked around his age but couldn't help but feel the amount of chakra they had. All three of them were trying to suppress it, especially the guy in the middle, while the two girls had low jonin chakra level, the one in the middle had around high jonin chakra level. Looking at their headbands, Naruto's eyes narrowed at the IWA shinobi in front of them. Who are you? Naruto asked with a firm tone and released a small amount of KI. The one in the middle took a step forward, looking unfazed by his KI. Just wanted to see with my own eyes, you must be Naruto Uzumaki Senju. My name is Ikano Ijenka, my twin sister Ikamano Ijenka, and her friend Lolja Lataka he introduced them. Naruto's eyes slightly widened at his last name. Ijenka? I thought that clan died in the first ninja war. Naruto asked himself. The one named Ikano had aqua eyes, dark lines that went from the middle of his eyes to his jawline. Triangle-shaped face, slightly small nose, small eyebrows, long gray hair like ash that reached his cheeks, three fangs that covered his right eye, that had a small slash above his eyebrow. A long dark shirt underneath his dark blue jacket, blue shinobi pants, with dark red sandals, a strange sword handle tightened around his thighs, but no steel attached to the handle, just an empty dark handle. He was slightly taller than Naruto and had a strange chakra that Naruto couldn't explain. Kurama? Do you feel this? Naruto asked him, still keeping his eyes on the shinobi in front of him. I don't know Naruto, he feels like he has two different types of chakra, but I can't feel any biju sealed inside him, I don't know what that might be but be careful, he's not to be underestimated, Kurama stated. Naruto mentally nodded his head and turned his attention at the guy in front of him. Ikano said nothing before a small smirk spread on his face. You done talking to him? He asked with a strong tone. Naruto's eyes widened, and so did Ashara's and Fu's and Kurama but surprisingly, Chomei didn't look surprised by what he said. Naruto wanted to ask how could he know but kept his mouth shut. Only then did Naruto notice his right hand. The whole hand was covered in white bandages, he narrowed his eyes at that, he wondered what he was hiding. You will be in Chunin exams? Naruto asked, already knowing the answer. I will. I'm looking forward to our match. It will be an honorable fight, he stated respectfully with a small smile at the edge of his lips. He bowed his head slightly and gestured for his team to walk away. Naruto had a slight smile on his face. This exam will indeed be interesting, he thought, remembering the strong shinobis of this exam. Gara, Yujito and Ikano. He turned to look at Asha and Fu. Soon they left and were in front of the gates of Senju compound. Fu felt nervous and was holding her left ring finger with her right hand, her eyes not focusing on the gate, instead of at the ground, anywhere else except the entrance. Ashera held her chest high, and her eyes filled with confidence, she knew the one she would be meeting was Tsunade-sama one of the Sanin of the Kanoha. From the corner of her eyes, she noticed the state of Fu and put a reassuring hand on her shoulder, Fu looked at her, and Ashera smiled at her. Don't worry, there's no need to be nervous, Asha whispered, hoping she helped her. Fu's face lightened up like a firecracker, and her orange eyes focused on the door opening. Outside came a woman with dark hair holding a pig. A smile formed on her face when she saw Naruto. naruto Kuen, she said quickly, giving him a bear hug. Naruto was desperately trying to talk. Shizu-chan. 
I, understanding what was happening, Shizun let go of her little brother, her hands behind her neck and chuckling nervously. Only then did she notice the two girls that were basically in his arms, a smirk on her face. And who are these beautiful ladies? I didn't know you have found girlfriends, Shizun said, smirking, and started laughing when both Naruto and the green-haired girl tried to deny anything, while the redhead had a slight smile on her face. Looking at her red hair and noticing the green hair, Shizun understood who they were. You must be Fu, and you are Ashera, Shizun said, hoping she was right, and they nodded. Come inside, Tsunade-san will be happy to have guests for dinner, Shizun said and walked inside the house, soon followed by Naruto, Asha, and Fu. At the doorstep, they removed their sandals and walked inside, Fu looked around in wonder at the beautiful house. At the same time, Ashera kept a neutral face and followed behind without saying anything, but from the corner of her eyes, she could see that the house was indeed beautiful. Opening another door, they walked inside in what Asha guessed should be the dining room. In the middle of the room stood a large table made of decorated wood, in the center of the table was the Senju clan symbol carved, at the edges she could see little carving that made it look like the symbol of Kanoha. At the head of the table was sitting a woman, Ashera immediately was confused. She had thought that the Sanans were old, Jiraiya-sama was old, at least around their 50s or 60s, Asha wasn't sure, but the woman in front of them was anything but old. Tsunade had a cup of tea near her, and, reading a few scrolls, hearing the door opening, she moved her eyes from the scroll to whoever came inside. She had expected Shizun, but instead, she saw Naruto standing at the door and two unknown girls by his side. Naruto Kuen, she said smiling and stood up smiling, giving him a quick kiss on the forehead. Tsunade san the Sanin raised her eyebrow at the name. The redhead always called her Bachan or Tsunade Bachan, much to her annoyance, the redhead hadn't called her like that since almost four years ago. Who are your lady friends? Tsunade interjected before he could say whatever he wanted to say. Naruto chuckled nervously, and Ashera saw that as her cue to introduce herself. My name is Ashera Uzumaki, she said with a firm tone. So this is the Uzumaki girl. The other girl must be Fu, Jinchuriki of Nanabai. My name is Fu, and I hope we can be great friends, Fu said, smiling like usual. Tsunade thought she was kind of weird, but she had figured it out a long time ago by now that in the shinobi world, everyone was weird in their own way, no exceptions. She narrowed her eyes at the little brats, and for a second, Naruto was afraid his godmother might tell them to go away. I see, well, we were just about to eat so you can eat with us, Tsunade decided and wanted to know more about them. Naruto sighed in relief while Fu gulped, Ashera kept her calm and wasn't intimidated by the Sanin, yet, everyone was seated at the main table. Tsunade sat at the head of the table while the others sat at the sides. Shizun and Naruto sat at the right side of Tsunade while Ashera and Fu sat at her left. So, Naruto had talked about you two Tsunade started drinking a bit of tea. Only good things, I hope, Ashera said with a hint of respect in her tone. Of course, now what is that you two like to do in your free time? She asked, and Naruto wondered if she was interrogating them. I like to learn fuinjutsu, read my books, sing and spend time with my friends, Ashera replied first and pointed at Fu and Naruto as her friends. Tsunade said nothing, and her brown eyes turned at the green-haired girl. I like to spend time with my friends, and I enjoy nature, especially birds. I also like to visit new places and make new friends, Fu replied with a cute smile on end. Again, Tsunade said nothing and decided to break the ice between them. You're here for Chunin exams, I hope you're ready for everything, Tsunade said with a half-joking tone, easing the tension between them. We have prepared as much as we could, if we fail, that means we weren't ready yet, Ashera responded. You will be Chunin by the end of this exam, Naruto said. Well, I wish all three of you good luck. With that said, they kept talking about their favorite places and their plans for the future. Ashera said that one day she would like to see Valley of THD End, since it was the place where Hashirama and Uchiha Madara had fought almost a century ago. Tsunade noted that their answers about the future were pretty vague, especially Ashara's response. The Sanin couldn't help but feel worried about the future. Kakashi had told them that Naruto had left at night to go to Yuzushiogakure without telling him anything. The worst part was that Naruto hadn't told her anything once he arrived in the village. Tsunade had said nothing. But it had hurt her that Naruto had told her nothing about him visiting Yuzushiogakure, but a part of her understood him. Naruto had told her many times since she had arrived in Kanoha that he wanted to rebuild Yuzushiogakure and revive the Uzumaki clan. Tsunade had suggested to him many times to build his compound in the village, but every time she mentioned that Naruto would always say that he would never want to raise his kids among people who chase and torture a little kid. People still saw Naruto with hatred after such a long time, it hadn't disappeared, it was just hiding in the shadows. 
Tsunade knew Naruto would be branded as a missing mean, but the worst part was herself. For a long time, she had seen him as a grandson, as family, he was her reason to be here, Tsunade in a way, thanked Naruto. She was sure that without him, she would still be drunk in a local somewhere, drowning in her own sorrow. Taking a deep breath, she stood up and left the room as the kids were asking Shizen something. Walking outside, it was close to sunset, her eyes searched the face of her grandfather. She couldn't help but imagine her brother, and then her mind drifted back to 37 years ago, sometimes. She wondered how things would have been if he had just survived, she still remembered the cursed words of the doctor. I'm sorry, but he didn't survive, his chakra was abnormal. I'm sorry, Tsunade-sama. A tear was slowly rolling down her cheek, just remembering the words made her heart feel pain. Why did you have to leave us? My, Bachan she escaped her thoughts when she heard his voice. She quickly whipped the tears from her cheek and turned around to look at Naruto. Just looking at him reminded her so much of Kushina, Minato, and somehow of Jiraiya. Narukuen, what are you doing outside? Tsunade asked with a teasing tone. Naruto chuckled, his hands behind his neck. I could ask you the same thing, but Asha got in a conversation with Shizu-chan, and full looked interested, he replied. Naruto, of course, had felt the sadness of his grandmother and wanted to know what was happening. You alright, Bachan? Naruto asked with a sincere tone that reminded Tsunade of. Jiraiya. She turned her head away, looking back at the Hokage faces in the mountain, she knew he could feel her pain, but he didn't need to see her, thinking about him again. It was more of a statement. Tsunade said nothing but just nodded her head. Sometimes, I can't help but look at you, Naruto, wondering if he would have been like you. Reckless, kind, smart, but most importantly with a sweetheart, Tsunade said quietly, still looking at the faces of the past Hokage. This earned a chuckle from Naruto. You should know that I see you as my grandmother, as my family, he replied. Tsunade closed her eyes, and happy tears streamed down her cheek. I know Naruchan, and I see you as my grandson, she stated, turning around, she gave him a hug that Naruto happily returned. Be careful in the exam. I want you alive once this exam is done, Tsunade whispered in his ear. Naruto smiled a genuine smile, he remembered when she had told him that he would live with her from now on. I promise you. Chapter 50, An Uzumaki Alone If you think this has a happy ending, then you weren't paying attention. Killer B. He and his team were resting in the hotel, his genin team was talking to each other, but mostly was Yuji Aidu. Who was talking, as B liked to call her sometimes, Samui had started the conversation by asking with who they were talking and why they were even talking with the Kanoha Shinobi in the first place. That friendship, if someone could even call it that between Kyomo and Kanoha, was never good since the days of Hashirama Senju. When Hashirama had captured Gyuki and Matatabi and gifted them to Kyomo, the first rakage had demanded that instead of Matatabi, they should be given the gobi. Still, Hashirama had refused and given it to IWA instead. Just the thought gave B a slight frown. In his mind, people needed to enjoy life instead of wasting their lives on worthless things such as greed and power, something he felt not many people knew anymore. After explaining to Samui about Mr. Nine and Miss Seven, Killer B had made sure to give both teams a warning. Don't fight him without a plan, just the thought that he can use Kyuubi makes him a strong opponent, not mentioning that he has high chakra level despite being a kid. Each of them had nodded their heads in understanding while Yujito looked impatient, she looked to want to fight. Mr. Nine as soon as possible. Right now, Yujito was busy saying that she couldn't wait to see what kind of challenges they would have in the Chunin exams of Kanoha. The others were wondering the same thing except one. The boy in question had his eyes closed, his short straight dark red hair, his hair were a mixture of red and dark, but mostly dark, his eyes were a dark yellow, but his right eye was strange, it had a strange crack in the middle of his eyeball, almost as if it was made of glass that went from the top to the bottom of his eyeball. He had the word, red, written on the side of his neck in red, long red jacket that covered his upper body, black shirt underneath that held a hidden blade, in length he stood 1.88 meter, small face and a sharp nose, thin lips, and a slightly pointy chin, underneath his shirt was a scar that went from his right shoulder down to his left leg. Black shinobi pants and dark sandals, in his right hand, he had a red ring with the word light written on it. His name was. Jitago, what do you think? Omoi suddenly asked the meditating man as Omoi loved to call him. Hearing his name, he opened his left eye, looking annoyed. About what? He asked, his voice sounding low, looking from Omoi to Samui but mainly to the blonde girl. He's talking about the Uzumaki, he's asking what do you think? Do you think he could be a problem? Samui asked with a soft tone, 
crossing her arms under her chest as her eyes were looking at him. Jutego wasn't sure why that even mattered. They would either win or lose. What was the point of bragging about whenever they would win or lose? As long as the enemy didn't try killing, he was okay with any other outcome. Releasing a sigh, annoyed that his friend didn't let him meditate. Standing up, he looked down at Omoi. He slightly itched his left ear before responding. Personally, I don't give a fuck. As long as he doesn't try actually to kill us, then we are cool, he replied with his hands on his pocket, most of the people in the room's suite dropped at his response except Samui who fully expected it. Aren't you at least a little interested in the exams? Yujito asked, taking a step closer. Jitego just shrugged his shoulders, not that I don't care, but I'm here because a sensei told me to if it were up to me. I would rather earn Chunnin rank by completing missions, he replied. Well, Yujito is a little, excited for the upcoming Chunin exams, Samui stated with a teasing tone. This earned a chuckle from everyone except Yujito. You finally decided to find someone, cat face, Jitego said smiling. Be careful, cats can be quite dangerous, Yujito responded with a slight grin on her face, her nails growing on her hands, this caused Jitego to raise his hands. Now now. I said nothing, isn't that true, Omoi he said, making Omoi raise his eyebrows, why did he suddenly include him in his trouble? That's true, but what if she actually falls in love with him, but he doesn't share her love, and this causes Yujito to unleash her bijou forcing the Uzumaki to unleash QB resulting in. Aha, Omoi screamed, rubbing his head in pain and glaring at Karui. None of that will happen, besides Naruto already likes me, Yujito replied with a slight seductive smile and husky tone at the end. She remembered Naruto's eyes checking her body when he first saw her. Just his blue eyes alone made her feel a small fire burning on her inner thighs. Be kept quiet as he remembered something slightly bothering him, something his brother told him before he left Kumo. Be made his way to an underground room, the stairs going down as far as the eye could see, B had been here before and was because his brother had suggested for him to try and use one of the weapons left by the Sage of the Six Paths since he had become a perfect Jinchuriki at the time and his brother wanted to know if that would allow him to use any of the weapons. That went as well as expected, B had ended up in the hospital for a week, his chakra had gone crazy the moment he touched the first weapon, and Gyuki had helped him since he stated that he would have ended up in the hospital for a month if he wasn't there to help him. Right now, he wasn't sure why his brother needed him. He hoped that he didn't have any other weapon for him to try and wield, but he highly doubted, but he couldn't help but wonder, why now? The Chunin exams were right around the corner. Soon he reached the door and opened it, walking inside he saw his brother standing in the middle of a large room, the room was decorated with silver square ceramic tiles, around his brother stood five of the weapons sealed inside glass boxes, B knew their seals weren't the best but were good enough. What can and I do for you brother, B said, wrapping and moving his hands around like an idiot. His big brother sighed in annoyance, no matter how many times he told him to stop rapping, his brother couldn't just shut up. Deciding just to ignore it, I gestured for B to follow him, which caused B to get confused but follow behind. He wondered what could he be showing him, as far as he knew, his brother didn't hide anything else in this secret room except the weapons of the sage. Maybe he wants you to clean this room, it is not like you're needed for anything else, Yuki suddenly said with a chuckle. B was about to say how he was the most beautiful and strongest shinobi ever to exist. It wasn't his job to clean anyone's room but walk inside the second room. He saw in the middle of the room a glass box, and inside was what he at first thought was a summoning contract, but giving a second look. He wasn't exactly sure. This scroll was one meter tall and was dark, the wood in the middle was decorated with to look like wings, and at the top was the head of a phoenix, it looked to be decorated with gold and silver, the eyes of the phoenix at the top were crimson red like blood. The letter was dark in color with golden lines at the edges, tightened with a thin dark rope that looked made of a material killer B had never seen before. At first glance, the scroll looked completely normal, but the strange feeling coming out made him wary, almost like he was expecting the scroll to open itself and from it to come out a monster. Even I kept a reasonable distance from the strange scroll, he was sweating from his forehead, and his right hand was slightly shaking. He gulped and turned his head at his brother, who stood at the door and was looking ready to leave. Come here, A said with a tone that left no room for arguments. B gulped and half hesitated to listen to him and didn't help that Gyuki had fallen dead silent the moment they walked inside. After a few moments of not moving, B walked closer, the feeling got stronger, B felt a weight in his entire body, almost as if an elephant had stepped on him, his whole body started sweating as if he had just fought a war all alone. He felt his chest tighten, almost as if he wasn't breathing enough air, a feeling of pain spread around his chest, and his heart started hurting, every heartbeat felt like a stab wound inside his organs. 
Brother, what tea is s this s scroll? Be asked, not liking being here. His brother stayed silent and turned to look at the scroll. I, don't know, he answered before he sighed and used his sleeve to whip the sweat from his forehead. I stood silent for a moment, deciding to get to the point. I'm as sure you know about T the destruction of the Uzumaki clan, A stated, B stood silent and waited for him to elaborate. This S scroll was the only thing the shinobis of Kumo were able to get from Yuuzushiogakure, my father tried to use it, but, his voice was filled with a hint of dread. The scroll LL was co-completely empty when he finally O opened it, no words written anywhere, he tried to W write, but the ink just disappeared almost as if it wasn't accepting it. My Y father then told a J. Jonin shinobi to use his blood hoping for something to see change. His brother stopped talking, his breath quickened. B took a step back. The feeling, the pressure, was too much to handle. What he happened? B asked, almost not wanting to know. B knew nothing good had happened from his tone alone. My F father said that the J. Jonin that had tried WW was, burned alive from the eye inside, first after he wrote the end name, the blood had started burning in crimson red fire, the J. Jonin had started screaming in agony a few seconds after he wrote his name, after a minute of screaming his skin had started turning dark like end night, his eyeballs burned, and his body was engulfed in red crimson flames. A after five minutes of screaming, the Jonin finally died a finished making B shake, his body started sweating even more. He hoped that his brother hadn't brought him here to try and write his name at the damned scroll. Just standing five meters away from it was enough to make him sweat and feel as if whole elephants were stepping on him, let alone coming close enough to open and write his stupid name on it. Almost as if he could read his thoughts, a finally backed away and stood in the same distance as his brother. No, I don't want you to write your name on it, A stated, B released a sigh of relief. He didn't know he was holding this whole time. Then suddenly, a question came to his mind. Why didn't he destroy the scroll if he couldn't use it, B asked. He tried. But the scroll couldn't be destroyed, they tried many different jutsus, but nothing worked, the scroll just stayed in the same place as if nothing happened. Then my father took it as his responsibility to lock it here since everyone else fainted whenever they stood longer than a few minutes near the scroll, after putting the scroll inside the glass box. Father fell to the floor and was in a coma for a whole month, many thoughts that he wouldn't make it, his brother answered. B then understood something that had bugged him for quite some time. Is because of this scroll that he tried to kidnap Kushina Uzumaki? B asked with a hint of anger in his tone. A's eyes narrowed slightly at the mention of the incident many years ago. His father had hoped that an Uzumaki would be able to use the scroll, and since the only one left alive was in Kanoha, he needed her, not just for the scroll but to have the Uzumaki bloodline in Kyumo. Of course, that plan had failed, A didn't answer, but B knew now. B now half expected that this scroll could be one of the reasons that his brother sent people to kidnap Hinata Hyuga, sure knowing the secrets of Byakugan, and having the bloodline in Kyumo would be beneficial for the village. Still, he wondered if his brother had hoped that Byakugan would be able to see anything hidden in the scroll that the naked eye couldn't see, he wanted to ask but didn't, he held his tongue. Why did you bring me here? B asked with a neutral tone. I wanted you to ask Hachibi if he knew anything about this scroll, A said and turned to look at his brother. B nodded his head. Hey, Yuki. You there, do you know anything about the Devil Scroll? B asked mentally, but to his surprise, Yuki stood silent. Suddenly after a second, B was in his mindscape, and Yuki stood in front of him with a dreadful look. Before B could ask what was the problem. Never. Try. To. Use. That. Scroll. Understood. B still remembered his tone. His friend didn't sound confident for the first time in B's life, he sounded scared somehow. After leaving that stupid place and finding a place to rest, B asked what the problem was, but his friend had said the same thing, never to be foolish enough and use the scroll. Right now, he wondered if giving the scroll to Mr. Nine would be the right thing to do, sure. He loved his country, but it is not like Kyumo was getting anything beneficial from it, and perhaps the scroll belonged to an Uzumaki. Naruto. He stood silent in the yard of his house and his godmother was inside making tea for Ashichan and Fuchan while Shizun was busy talking about how she had met Tsunade and similar things like that. Naruto stood alone as he remembered the tears of his godmother, it had been on January 25th when he found out. The first year his godmother had returned, on the January 25th, Naruto immediately noticed the sadness coming from his godmother. He had immediately gone into her room and found it empty, walking outside, she had seen her with flowers in her hand. Bachan. What's wrong? Naruto asked softly, slowly walking towards her. Her godmother stood in the same place, 
She was lying on the grass as tears rolled down her cheek. Naruto then felt a hand on his shoulder, he turned around to see Shizun looking at him with sadness. Leave her alone for now, she whispered, Naruto wanted to refuse, but the pleading look Shizun gave him made him not talk and follow her inside. The same day, Shizun told Naruto that Tsunade had a child, but he was stillborn, the doctors said he lived only an hour. Tsunade had made a small tombstone close to Senju compound, she and Jiraiya visited the place every year. But one thing that caught Naruto by surprise was the grass and flowers that had grown around the tombstone looked fresh despite Tsunade being sure that only she and Jiraiya knew about the place. Naruto escaped his thoughts when he heard the door opening, he didn't turn around and felt a hand on his shoulder, turning his head slightly, he was met with Fuchan's face, who was smiling cutely at him. Naruto smiled back and turned his head to look towards the mountain. Just the smile alone was enough to make his heart race, he felt a sensation on the middle of his body, his cheek turned red, not wanting her to see him a blushing mess, he turned his face towards the Hokage mountain. The sun was slowly disappearing behind the mountain, remembering that he promised they would see from the top when close to sunset. Fuchan, tell Ashichan that this is the best time to see the dawn of the sun, Naruto said. Fu nodded in understanding and ran inside to call Ashera. Outside came Ashera, followed by Tsunade and Shizen. Fu and Ashera turned to them and bowed their heads at them. Thank you for having us, both of them said at the same time. Tsunade just brushed it off and smiled kindly. Don't worry, just keep the idiot out of problems, she said with a smile. They both nodded their head and followed Naruto to the mountain. Seeing them leave, Tsunade looked at Naruto's place and glanced at the necklace around her neck. Softly touching it, she closed her eyes and wondered what the future would bring to them. Naruto sure does have good friends, Shizen said. Indeed he does. It reminds you of someone, doesn't he? Yes. Hokage Mountain. They soon reached the end and stopped and turned to look at the horizon in front of them. The sun had half descended under the horizon. The light shining bright in front of them, Naruto sat at the ground, Fu sat at his left and Ashera at his right. The light illuminated the whole village giving it a shade of red. The trees around the village looked brighter and red. Red leaves fall from the trees showing almost the end of autumn. Naruto felt a head resting on his left shoulder, he turned slightly to see Fu resting her head on his shoulder. Is very beautiful, Narukuin, Fu said softly, Naruto didn't know why but he put his arm around her, placing her closer. Feeling her smooth skin under his hand send tingles around his entire body. Suddenly they heard singing, Naruto and Fu turned to see Ashera with a leaf around her lips and whistling with it. It was a relaxing melody, her eyes closed, half of the leaf was in her mouth and the other covering her lower lip. Fu and Naruto kept listening to the melody, he felt relaxed and somehow sleepy, Fu had her eyes closed and listened. After 10 minutes, she put the leaf away and turned to look at Naruto and Fu. That was incredible, Asha-chan, both of them said at the same time. Asha felt her heart skip a bit and smiled happily. Naruto felt Ashera resting her head on his shoulder as well, her red hair shining from the sun's light shining down at them. Her hair covering his right shoulder, Naruto felt his hand touching her beautiful hair. Naruto always liked her red hair, but right now, they looked to be shining, like a ruby in his eyes. Ashera felt her cheek burn from the close contact with Naruto, how his fingers were caressing her hair made her feel good and loved. A feeling she didn't ever want to disappear. Fu had her eyes closed and just enjoyed the feeling of having Naruto so close to her, his heartbeat in her ears was like a song, it was beating for her and Ashera. A smile showed on her face feeling at peace and loved in his arms, and she knew at that moment that she always wanted to have this feeling with Naruto. The sun slowly disappeared. Naruto closed his eyes and imagined how it looked from Yuzushiogakure, did the surface of the sea around the island shined in red, he wondered and hoped that he would be able to one day call that place home. This was the most beautiful thing I have ever seen Naruto, thank you for showing us, Fu whispered, raising her head slightly, she leaned closer to his face, and both she and Ashera kissed his cheek. Naruto felt his whole face burn, but instead of hiding his face, he kissed them back in the cheek. Soon they left the mountain and arrived in front of the hotel where Ashera and Fu were staying. Narukuin, I hope to meet as soon as possible, Fu said smiling. Good night Naruto, don't forget that I want a rematch, Asha teased. Naruto smiled back and nodded his head that he hadn't forgotten about it. Karen. Karen ran through the trees as fast as possible, the strange ANBU squad following her behind. A kunai with a paper bomb suddenly exploded in front of her, sending her crashing against a tree. Opening her eyes, she saw three shinobi, wearing ANBU strange masks, root written in their masks. You will come with us, Danzo Sama has been looking for an Uzumaki for a long time now one of them spoke with an emotionless voice. Instead of shaking in fear that now she was surrounded, Karen stood at her feet. 
without fear. A smile on her face. You're fools, you fell right into my trap. Uzumaki style, chains of blood. Before they could even move a muscle to stop her, several golden chakra chains came out from the ground, they tightened around their bodies. When they made contact, blue chakra started getting absorbed and went to Karen. Her wound and bruises around her arms and legs healed almost immediately. One of them escaped the chains, pulling out his sword, he rushed towards the Uzumaki girl wanting to cut her open. The chains disappeared, and Karen used four chains from under sleeves and blocked his swing. The contact with the chains caused the sword to crack slightly around the blade part. Jumping away, the chains around her sleeve started changing shape. If the ANBU was surprised, he hit it exceptionally well. The chains around her right arm changed and formed into a golden sword with a red handle. Karen smirked, her red eyes glaring at the ANBU for daring to use an Uzumaki. Without a single hesitation, Karen unlocked a seal around her stomach, a phoenix seal in her left wrist turned red, she felt the surge of power inside her and rushed at the ANBU with high speed. Chapter 51, Old Friends, New Faces Kakashi As he stood waiting in the middle of the training yard, the clock hit 7 a.m., the first to arrive was his favorite redhead, who looked surprised to see him so early despite feeling his chakra from his house. Kakashi just waved at Naruto as they stood in silence, waiting for the others. Sasuke came after 30 minutes when the emo noticed Kakashi standing in the middle of the training yard. He murmured something under his breath. Kakashi sensei has come early, this must be the end of the world. Sasuke sat near a tree and started doing push ups while Naruto drew something in a scroll, probably Fuenjutsu. After 10 minutes came Sakura, even before walking close, the scent of her perfume took the whole training yard, Kakashi just stared emotionless at Sakura. At the same time, Naruto slightly shook his head in disappointment. Kakashi sensei, you have come early, Sakura said, not hiding her surprise. The sensei said nothing, instead, he closed the book he was reading, this was the cue for both Naruto and Sasuke to walk close. Sakura and Naruto, look behind you. Kakashi pointed behind them, and they quickly spun around, but there was nothing there. However, when they turned back to their sensei, Kakashi put them in a genjutsu with his Sharingan, and they fell asleep. Seeing this, Sasuke instinctively unleashed his own Sharingan, but the young Uchiha was confused when Kakashi simply brought his headband down and covered his Sharingan eye. Now that they are out the way, you and I need to talk, Kakashi informed his Uchiha student. Couldn't you have just swung by my house afterwards instead of knocking them out with a genjutsu? Sasuke cocked an eyebrow in confusion. No, too much trouble. I will be talking with them just like we are about to. Kakashi explained, now that we are alone, I need to tell you, to give up on your revenge. That had been the last thing Sasuke had been expecting to come out of Kakashi's mouth. In this line of work, I have seen just how bad it can get for ninjas like you. In the end, those that tasted revenge were not satisfied, it ended in tragedy. You'll only hurt and suffer more. Even if you get your revenge, all you will be left with is emptiness. Shut up. Sasuke snapped at him furiously, his Sharingan blazing, what the hell do you know? How could you possibly understand me? Easy, just try to calm down, Sasuke, Kakashi said coldly. What if I were to kill the one that you love the most? Maybe then you would understand just how I feel. That would work, but unfortunately for me, no such person exists. Kakashi smiled at him, they have all been killed already. He stated but didn't mention that his most precious people were a snake mistress who liked blood, the redhead behind him, and a guy who didn't shut up about youth. Sasuke's Sharingan faded away as he stared at his sensei in shock. I know the pain that you feel, Sasuke. I have lived through a war, and I have lost everyone important to me. Kakashi informed him sadly, and he placed a hand on the young Uchiha's shoulder, I've tasted revenge. I killed the man that murdered my best friend and all I felt was emptiness and sadness. Sasuke shrugged off his arm, and he shouted, then what am I supposed to do, huh? Revenge is all I have. I need to avenge my clan. Itachi, my older brother, slaughtered them all in cold blood. Including our parents. All to test his powers, and you are saying for me to let that go. Of course, that is not what I am saying, Sasuke. Kakashi told him sympathetically, all I am trying to say is that you don't live your life for the sole purpose of revenge. Itachi must pay for his crimes, but don't throw away yours just to kill him. I know how hard this must be for you to hear, Sasuke, because I was similar to you when I was young. What do you mean? Sasuke demanded. My mother died when I was very young, 
I don't even remember her anymore, and my father was an excellent shinobi, and I admired him more than anyone. I wanted to be just like him. Kakashi revealed, and Sasuke couldn't help but think back to when he felt that way about Itachi. However, during the war, he chose to abandon an important mission to save his comrades. Unfortunately, the people of the Land of Fire, the shinobi from the village, and even the comrades that he had saved all hated him for it. He fell into disgrace, and in his shame, he killed himself. Sasuke's eyes widened. I was the one that found him, and so I swore that I would always follow the rules, even if it meant abandoning my comrades to complete a mission. For a time, I hated my father for what he did. I was so bitter. I eventually changed thanks to my teammate, Abito Uchiha, and he taught me how important it was to protect my comrades. Unfortunately, he died in the war, and he gave me his Sharingan eye to help protect our friends and me. You are the same as me, Sasuke. You cling to your hatred and need for revenge because it is the only way it kept you from falling into despair. The feeling in Sasuke's legs left him, and he fell to the ground, backside first. His head was lowered, and his fists were clenched tight enough to draw blood. You and I have had a rough life, but there is still some light for us, Kakashi told him, and the two of them glanced over at the sleeping forms of Naruto and Sakura. We still don't know each other all that well, but we have both felt the light reach our hearts thanks to them. Sasuke's eyes widened, and he looked up at Kakashi in shock. Go home, Sasuke, and think over everything that I have said carefully. We will resume training tomorrow. If you want to talk about what happened here, that's up to you. I'll listen if you want, but if you don't want to talk about it, then I won't press you. Kakashi told him. I'm not your father or your brother, and I am not an Uchiha. You and you alone can only decide the path you choose. All I am trying to give you is a path that has a future, a path where you can get justice for your family's murder, and you can find happiness. Don't let Itachi rule you, Sasuke. He has ruined your life enough, don't you think? Sasuke didn't reply. The young Uchiha simply stood up, and he walked away with his hands in his pockets. Kakashi sighed, that had been a lot more difficult for him than he had thought it would be. He didn't like talking to people about his past, but Sasuke needed someone to understand him somehow. He hoped that he had done the trick. Next, he would talk to Sakura. He released the genjutsu on her with a quick, kai, and she woke up groggily. What happened? Sakura muttered, and with a glance around her surroundings, she noticed somebody important to her missing, where is Sasuke? He has gone home, Kakashi startled her, he and I needed to have a chat, and now it is time for you and me to have one. Why is Naruto asleep? Sakura questioned him after she stood up. When you and I are done, then he and I will talk. Kakashi informed her, now I need to tell you something important. What is it? Sakura said impatiently. She was anxious to look for her Sasuke. You need to stop pursuing Sasuke, Kakashi told her bluntly. Sakura's eyes widened, what? Why? Sakura, both you and Sasuke are only 13, almost 14 years old. Sasuke isn't the type of person that is interested in having a girlfriend. Kakashi explained, right now, he is sorely focused on avenging his clan and he is so full of hatred that the concept of romantic feelings and love is unknown to him. I have taken steps that will hopefully help curb his hatred, but there is another factor that has to be taken into account. What is that Kakashi-sensei? Sakura said, depressed. Sasuke is extremely proud of his clan, and he will obey the law and principles of his clan. Usually, the clan's head would marry a fellow Uchiha that could rival him in strength, but since there are no female Uchihas left, Sasuke will then look to someone powerful within the village when he is older. Kakashi explained to her, the Uchiha clan respects strength, and at the level, you are at right now, Sakura, you're not even on the radar. Sakura flinched at his comment, and she looked away, hurt. The feelings of inferiority that she had long since suppressed started to build up within her again. Sakura, just why did you become a ninja? Kakashi asked her, you need to remember that if you continue like this, it is only a matter of time before you lose in a mission, and when that happens, you will either fall, or a friend of yours might die saving your life, Kakashi said coldly remembering Abito saving his life. I seriously doubt it was to win the heart of Sasuke, you would be way too young for you to have those feelings. Sakura didn't respond, but her eyes did widen at the question. You seem to have lost your way, Sakura. Take the day off and think about the reasons why you wanted to become a ninja. A ninja that doesn't know the reasons why they are training to be a ninja are the first to perish. Kakashi told her, tell me the answer tomorrow. 
Kakashi watched his young pupil walk away with her dead down, she was upset, he knew that. However, he hoped she would understand that he was only trying to make her a better ninja. To be honest, he didn't have a clue how the Uchiha clan worked when it came to marriages and the duties of the head of the clan, but he knew that Lai would help Sakura inspire him to be a stronger ninja. At least, he hoped that it would. So that's what you told them, Naruto suddenly said as he stood behind him. Kakashi didn't look shocked that Naruto apparently could withstand a Sharingan Genjutsu, knowing how many seals he had drawn in his body, he half expected everything Naruto might ever need was sealed in a pocket somewhere. Naruto, I wanted to talk with you, you said you wanted to rebuild Yuzushiogakure, that means leading your own people, the only thing I'm asking is, do you know the risk and why? Kakashi asked carefully, knowing Naruto didn't like that much to talk about it. Naruto simply stood in his place before putting his hands behind his head. My father sealed Kyuubi inside me because he believed that the people of this village were different, that they would see me as a hero, as a hero who's keeping Kyuubi inside. We both know how that went, but tell me Kakashi, I know why they avoided me, if I had been in their place, perhaps I would be wary, but they stepped on me, starved me, beat me, sold me overpriced everything, called me a demon, called my mother a whore for giving birth to me. They told me my parents abandoned me. Everyone who beat me or tried to partly did it because of their hatred, but mostly they did it because they could, because of a sick desire to feel themselves powerful. Why would I want to raise my children amongst these people, my father was the Hokage, and my mother was an Uzumaki princess and a hero of Kanoha that is still mentioned, and they hated me all the same. Me a kid. Kakashi stood silent at his words, remembering them very well, he saw Naruto's eyes had turned red as he was talking. Kakashi couldn't help but spit on the people that did this to Naruto, even if Naruto was raised from the very beginning by a loving family, people would glare and call him names whenever he left the house, their hatred blinded them to the fact that Naruto was only a kid who needed love. Very well, tomorrow same time here, Kakashi replied and left the training yard. Kakashi appeared in front of the memorial stone, he couldn't help but think of Minato-sensei and Kushina-san. Kneeling in front of the memorial stone, he put his hand on the grass. Minato-sensei, what should I do? Naruto. He, along with Sasuke and Sakura, were making their way towards the academy. Yesterday Kakashi told them about the Chunin exams and that he had registered them, Naruto didn't care much, but this could be an excellent opportunity to challenge himself. Since two days ago, both Sasuke and Sakura have been extra quiet. Usually, Sakura couldn't keep her mouth shut, but right now, she was as silent as the grave, and Naruto welcomed this change, while Sasuke was always quiet, this was too quiet even for him. The young Uzumaki, of course, knew the reason and hoped that they would listen. Sakura was a failure so far in every sense of the word, while Sasuke, Naruto hoped he would give up in his quest to kill Itachi Uchiha. They walked down a hallway and came to a line of students standing outside of room 301, which was strange because Naruto could have sworn, they only walked up a single flight of stairs. In front of the door stood two chunin, and they seemed to be barring the way, keeping the other genin from entering the room. Naruto looked closely at the sign then, the chunin and just smirked, clever, a genjutsu over the sign to discourage the genuinely gullible. The bullies are also nice, most people would be fooled by their transformation, but what is he doing here? Out of the throng of students, three stood out to Naruto the most, they stood out because he and Sasuke knew one of them, and Sakura knew two of them. He was Hyuga Niji, Hinata's cousin and a member of the Hyuga branch family. Naruto knew him because Hinata had mentioned him a few times during the academy. Niji had fair skin and long, black hair, tied back in a loose ponytail, tied a few inches above the end. He wore a black forehead protector, a beige-colored shirt, a dull blue shirt, and mesh armor beneath that, dark brown shorts, blue shinobi sandals, and wrapped bandages around his right arm, chest, and right leg. Considered a prodigy, he was his class's rookie of the year. He was a hardbound traditionalist and openly scorned Hinata for branching out and modifying the Hyuga Taijutsu style. In his mind, the Hyuga are elite, and only elite ninja can defeat them, and he believes his eyes will allow him to defeat any opponent. Anyone else is fated to lose against them, no matter how hard they worked. What were they playing at, Naruto wondered, with Niji, they should have seen right through the illusion. The other two genin, standing with him, a shinobi with shiny black hair in a bowl-cut style, round eyes with prominent lower eyelashes, and very thick eyebrows, wearing a green jumpsuit, bandages around his forearms up to his fingers, orange leg warmers, and a red forehead protector, worn as a belt. A kunoichi, with black hair and gray eyes, her hair in two Chinese-style buns on her head with short fringe bangs framing her face, 
She wears a blue sleeveless chipao style blouse, with red sleeve trimmings and yellow fastening buttons and dark green pants, under the Ishanin medical apron which made her a medic, her forehead protector and sandals are both blue. A pouch on her thigh, with two green and black bands are sewn on in decoration, seem to be housing a set of scrolls. They must be his teammates, who are they, Naruto wondered. The shinobi attempted to gain entry but was unceremoniously knocked back on his butt, two bruises decorated his face. Ten Ten knelt to help him up and looked sternly at the two Chunin shinobi. One of them scoffed, you're taking the Chunin exams, but you can't even get past us, why don't you just give up now, the other one asked condescendingly, before you get hurt, please, let us through, we're supposed to go in there, Ten Ten pleaded before attempting to walk past them as well, only to be met with the same fate as her teammate. A punch to the face. Oh, that's harsh, said a voice nobody knew. Did you say, harsh, one of them said, don't kid yourself, we're being nice by comparison. The exams are gonna make this look like a picnic, he informed them. Some of you won't survive the exams, the other one told them, others will be wrecked for life or go crazy. It's always life and death for Chunin. You think being Chunin is a joke, the first one asked. We're qualified to lead missions, the lives of your squad members are in your hands, so you better be able to take the heat. Delicate little girls don't belong here, he finished. Naruto narrowed his eyes. When he saw the way he talked to Ashera and Fu, he saw the third teammate immediately standing up. You should watch your tongue. I don't like people who talk like that to my teammates, the genin said. I agree, Naruto suddenly said as he stood in front of them with a smirk. This gained the attention of everyone since almost no one had seen him move, except a few. He's fast, Niji, and the third teammate of Fu's team thought. You must be the Senju, Naruto Uzumaki Senju, one of them said, causing Naruto to gain even more attention. This made Niji narrow his eyes even more, the boy with green clothes to look at him interested while Ten Ten looked at him in awe. Naruto said nothing but just glanced at Asha and Fu, who smiled at him. Just drop the genjutsu, this is just the second floor, Sasuke said from behind him. Naruto understood the true meaning of the genjutsu. Oh. So you figured it out, one of them said before he rushed towards Sasuke, only for both of them to be blocked by the weird looking boy with the green jumpsuit. He used his legs to block me. Sasuke thought, surprised and feeling the strength behind his feet. I thought we weren't supposed to gain attention Lee, Ten Ten said, walking over to them, followed by Niji. I'm sorry, Lee said, moving his feet away before turning to Naruto. I want to fight you, ghost. He could hear multiple heartbeats from where he stood. Almost all of them were the same, without emotions, but he could hear the heartbeat of a few of them that still held feelings inside them. The man didn't know why that was, perhaps Danzo could never indeed disappear someone's emotions is. It is hard, but everyone has their breaking point, even the ones without feelings. His feet stood against the ceiling, his head moved towards the sound of the door opening, he recognized Danzo's heartbeat immediately. Still, he felt something different, his heartbeat was faster than usual, his breath was quickened, his moving pace was more rapid, the air around his muscles was harsher. The air around everyone reacts to someone's moving, even a tiny movement such as the muscles of a finger changed the air around, he could detect these changes, and from the heartbeat, he could tell Danzo was angry. He heard him sit in his usual chair, and his neck moved towards the multiple heartbeats that had kneeled in front of him. Report Weapon 9 The voice echoed throughout the place. Danzo-sama, the team has failed to capture the Uzumaki girl the emotionless voice of the man in front of Danzo was heard. His muscles around his cane tightened, causing a sound of cracking to reach his ears. His teeth were hitting each other, and the muscles around his forehead and eyes moved. For now, do nothing, the exam will start soon. I want all three Uzumaki and my new weapon captured. Failing is not possible, Danzo spoke with a dangerous tone as his heartbeat increased to 140 per minute. Unknown to Danzo, few of his emotionless weapons were feeling, fear, but ghosts could tell from their heartbeat, someone might try to hide their feelings behind a mask, but they could never stop their heartbeat from telling him the truth. Leave, Danzo spoke with a firm tone commanding them. As he walked away, Ghost could feel the air moving strangely around his right arm. He wondered what that was but decided to deal with what he came here for. An ANBU root reached his room ready to change his clothes for the Chunin exams. As he started preparing his bag, his hands moved to the secret pocket in his bag, pulling out a little book, he still didn't know why he still kept this book, in front of the cover it was his drawn, his hand stretched out for someone to grab it, but that part was empty. No one was drawn. Unknown to him, a man stood hanging in the ceiling. He did a hand sign, a purple seal on his palm stretched and covered his whole hand in purple, at the tip of his fingertips. He did a hand sign. 
Locked in, he whispered and jumped from the ceiling behind the root ANBU who had his head downwards. Without wasting another moment, he raised his right hand, and his fingertips started shining. He stood in front of the root with a single move and put two of his fingertips at his forehead. Seal caused the heartbeat of the root to slow down immediately, slower and slower, his body fell to the floor, but the man stopped his body before hitting the floor. His heartbeat had disappeared, and the new seal on his forehead started doing his job. Five down, four to go. Chapter 52, Team Kanoha Naruto He raised his eyebrows at the challenge coming from the bushy brows, just the way he was posing, and his green jumpsuit made the redhead question his sanity, but at the same time, he knew just who exactly could be his sensei. I have an eternal rival, and his only reason to exist is to be a pain in my ass. Naruto chuckled slightly as he remembered Kakashi's words about Guy. Naruto returned his attention at Lee, who still had his eyes on him. Naruto had heard from Guy himself that he had a prodigy of hard work on his team. Naruto knew the one in front of him was the one prodigy. Knowing that he knew this one couldn't be underestimated, a smirk spread on his lips. Very well, Lee, Guy sensei had mentioned you, let's see how good his special student is Naruto accepted the challenge, much to the surprise of everyone around him. Lee wondered how Naruto knew Guy sensei while Niji was interested to see how strong was the senju. Ten Ten had to admit that the redhead wasn't bad looking, and his whiskers marks made him look quite cute. Niji Sai twitched when he saw Ten Ten looking at the redhead as if he was some important guy, his face turned cold again, the fate had declared him the winner. Naruto, perhaps you should leave this for later. The exams will start within an hour, Ashera suddenly suggested as her eyes analyzed the weird jumpsuit freak, at first glance, he looked like he belonged in a circus, but Asha knew well not to understate her opponents, and she could see evident visible bruises around his foot. At the same time, his hands were covered in bandages. Don't worry, Asha-chan, we will finish this soon, Naruto replied and made his way towards a training ground near. Sasuke noticed the girl with red hair like Naruto's, and he had to admit she looked much stronger than Sakura. While his eyes checked the redhead girl, Sakura was visibly fuming. How dare that girl catch the eye of her Sasuke, but as she glared at the redhead, the words of her sensei ringed in her ears like a bell. Do you want your friends to die because of you? Sakura felt a cold shiver in her whole body, her arms crossed, her skin felt cold, and the image of Sasuke from Sensei's Genjutsu showed in her eyes again. No, I, I will protect him, I will protect both of them, she thought, and her mind returned to the issue in front of them. Naruto and Lee stood a bit far from the others, the redhead knew he wasn't the best at Taijutsu, he knew Kenjutsu. Sasuke activated his Sharingan, while Niji looked interested in the redhead, he wondered if he was just like a loser as his teammate. While Ten Ten looked concerned for Lee but couldn't help but wonder how strong Naruto was. Fu and Ashera stood silent, while Akashu, the third teammate of Fu's team, had his eyes on the redhead. Lee suddenly moved in front of Naruto, who used his forearm and blocked the attack. Naruto moved again with low jonin speed towards Lee, who looked surprised before dodging to his right and showing up behind Naruto. Hitting him in the back, sending Naruto flying, Lee jumped with his arms and legs and showed behind Naruto ready to kick him, when a fist hit him straight in the face sending him crashing against a wall, the debris flew everywhere, and the smoke covered the area around the small crater. Naruto made sure not to use his full strength, otherwise, he might accidentally harm him a great deal. Sakura and Ten Ten sighed in relief that the fight had ended, but the others and Lee was still in the game. Lee suddenly ran towards Naruto, the redhead raised his hands to block. Still, the bushy brows started running around him, Naruto's eyes followed him, as Lee began to throw small attacks for any opening to exploit, Naruto saw another attack coming but didn't move to block it, Lead hit his chin, as Naruto spit out blood before Naruto could crash with the wall, Lee showed up underneath him and kicked him up in the air before jumping in front of him with a leg coming down like an axe towards his chest. Everyone was surprised when a massive explosion hit the center of the training yard, creating a much more giant crater. Naruto Sakura screamed in fear, the smoke cleared, and her eyes widened to see Naruto standing above Lee. The brushy brow's leg was on Naruto's left hand caught in an iron grip. The Uzumaki's right hand in front of Lee's face, the bushy brow spit out a bit of blood but still smiling. What happened? Sakura found herself asking, not being able to see much of the fight. Naruto grabbed his leg before it hit his chest and with his right hand grabbed his chest and smashed him down against the floor, Asha explained much impressed by the jumpsuit guy, she had to admit Lee was faster than her, the only thing she thought she could exploit from his fighting style was his massive lack of chakra, she knew he couldn't use chakra, but that didn't stop him from being incredibly fast. Naruto stood up and smirked at the hidden weights around Lee's legs, he wondered how fast was Lee without them. 
While Lee couldn't see Naruto's weight seals around his arms and legs, he knew Naruto hadn't given it all. That was a good fight Lee, I'm looking forward to our rematch, Naruto stated and pulled out his hand for him to shake. Lee smiled back and shook his hand, but a new white smoke appeared near them before anyone could see anything. Team Fu and Team 7 looked in confusion at the sudden appearance of a turtle, they all could see the emblem of Kanoha around his head, but Naruto couldn't remember ever hearing of a turtle summoning contract. How dare you, you know that move is forbidden. The turtle suddenly exclaimed, much to everyone's shock except Team 9, who looked embarrassed except Lee, who looked ready to cry. Lee bowed his head in apology, I'm sorry, I got carried away. The turtle glared at Lee, causing him to flinch. B but I wasn't planning to use the R-reverse version, Baka. The turtle exclaimed, causing Lee to flinch again. You think that excuse will work? You should know what it means for a shinobi to expose his move. While this was happening, Sasuke and Sakura wondered if this turtle was their sensei, both had to admit that Lee's weird attitude made more sense now, who wouldn't be weird if they had a turtle for a sensei. Guy sensei will kick your butt for this, Lee, the turtle suddenly stated, and on top of that, turtle suddenly showed up what could only be described as a big copy of Lee. Sakura held her tongue from the screaming at the absolute madness, she couldn't fathom how someone could have such big eyebrows. Guy made a pose, his teeth shining, and a twinkle suddenly shined for a moment. Naruto knew from the first time that Guy was a weird one, but why he had to act like this was beyond him. Lee, you fool! Guy shouted at him, punching him in the jaw so hard that Lee flew back. Lee quickly recovered, though. Guy then proclaimed, for breaking the rule and fighting before the exam, you must complete 500 laps around Kanoha before sundown. The whole Team 7 and Team Fu gaped at the absurdity of the challenge, believing it to be nothing more than a joke. However, they were further shocked into disbelief at Lee's reply. Hi Guy Sensei. Lee's eyes were burning at the challenge. Probably at how youthful it was, Naruto mused. Naruto decided to intervene before even more weirdness took place. Excuse me, but don't you think that you should focus on the Chunin exams right now? Guy Sensei turned to them for the first time, looking a bit sheepish. Oh, my bad. Turning to Lee, he coughed in his hand and said, Lee, you will fulfill your punishment after the Chunin exams, got it? Lee stood at attention, hi, Guy Sensei. Guy then turned to the other team. So you guys are from Kakashi's team? Sasuke raised an eyebrow condescendingly, you know Kakashi. Guy chuckled as he rubbed his chin, Kakashi and I are eternal rivals. I am leading currently, with my 50 wins to Kakashi's 49. The whole team 7 sweat dropped at that. Guy then turned to Naruto, ah, uh, Naruto has been some time, how is my second youthful student training? Guy asked, full on smile. Naruto itched his ear and turned his attention back at Guy. Did you say something? This caused both Guy and Lee to scream in pure horror. Damn you, Kakashi and your hip attitude. Damn you, Naruto and your hip attitude. Both cried anime tears and hugged each other as the others wondered what was wrong with them, Niji just wanted to get over with, while Ten Ten just smiled, already used to this kind of reaction. Fu smiled at how much they loved each other while Ashera was thinking just how weird were grown-ups in this village. While Akashu was sleeping while standing, his snore the only sign that he was asleep, Naruto raised an eyebrow at the strange guy, he wondered how much Shikamaru would give to know his secret of sleeping while standing. As they were hugging, Guy moved away and raised his fist, Lee, since you clearly lost, you will do 1000 push-ups at the top of the Hokage mountain with only your right hand. Yes, Guy sensei Lee. Guy sensei Now suddenly in front of them was a perfect beach, along with the sun shining. Everyone screamed in horror at the unbreakable Genjutsu except Fu, who was smiling cutely and her hands clenched together in front of her chest, happy for their happiness. Kurama, what is this Genjutsu? Why aren't my seals destroying it Naruto mentally screamed, Despite doing his hand sign, his seals weren't protecting him from the SSS rank Jinjutsu. I don't know, close your eyes, Naruto, Kurama screamed in pure agony. While Sasuke had deactivated his Sharingan since it had started hurting, Niji looked downwards to avoid getting blind. Finally, they stopped, Naruto sighed in relief, his heartbeat finally going back to normal. As much as I hate to stop your love, the exams will start soon, Ashera said as her eyes were barely visible from the orange book in front of her face. Guy's eyes twitched slightly at the book, but he decided to deal with Kakashi later, he needed to stop infecting the new generations. She's right, now make me proud, Guy stated and disappeared with elite jonin speed. No one was able to follow his speed except Naruto, who was able to. Soon team Fu and team 9 left them, 
but Naruto couldn't help but have a feeling in his chest, the same feeling he once got from Tojiji yesterday. Training Ground 44, also known as the Forest of Death, was a nightmare for most ninjas of any rank. Many mysteries surrounded the forbidden training ground, rumors amongst the civilians were that the first Hokage, Hashirama Senju, created it to house all nine bijou when he caught and tamed them. Rumors among the shinobi were that Training Ground 44 used to be the old academy test back when the village was first constructed. Whatever the rumors, the fact of the matter is that for the last hour, the usual inhabitants that call the Forest of Death home have been scurrying to their dens, cowering in their caves or have taken flight high above in the canopy of the ancient trees of the forest, because of the two high-class shinobi who have turned the Forest of Death into their battleground. Earth-style, Swamp of the Underworld Jiraiya's voice echoed through the forest as he slammed his hands down into the earth in front of him. Jiraiya knew an obvious move like that wouldn't ensnare his opponent. He was using it to get some space between the two of them and perhaps buy some time for his next movement. As expected, his opponent did a series of handsprings away from the quickly spreading mud swamp and finally landed on the base of a tree trunk where he went through a quick succession of hand seals, fire style, great fireball jutsu. Naruto inhaled deeply, filling his chest with chakra-converted flames and then expelled it in a continuous red-hot stream of fire aimed at the ever-growing swamp made by the Toad Sage. Jiraiya released his swamp jutsu in shocked amazement as he watched it be turned into a field of clay. Jiraiya's shock didn't last long as he saw Naruto go through more hand seals, not wanting to take the chance of getting hit with any jutsu his godson was about to send his way, the white-haired Sanin took off into the foliage of the surrounding trees before Naruto could finish his seals. Water Style, Pressure Cannon as Jiraiya ran through the forest, he took a quick glance behind him to see the damage he had just escaped from when his eyes widened. Cutting into tree trunks and solid rock like a hot knife through butter was a stream of water about an inch thick. The toad sage poured on the speed to avoid being cut in half. Jiraiya made a sharp right turn in the direction he estimated Naruto to be, he threw a handful of shuriken ahead of him, disrupting Naruto's jutsu before bursting out the foliage and attacking Naruto with a dropkick to the chest. Gotcha, brat. Jiraiya thought with a smirk as he took great satisfaction in the shocked look in the red-headed haired ninja's eyes. As Jiraiya landed on his feet, his smirk was replaced with a look of shock of his own when the Naruto he kicked burst smoke and was replaced with shattered wood pieces. The Sanin's danger sense kicked in, and he jumped away just in time to avoid a heel drop from Naruto that left a crater in the ground. Naruto didn't want to give Jiraiya even a second to think so he sprang forward and threw a right hook that would have taken off Jiraiya's head if he hadn't leaned back to avoid it. Jiraiya may not have been known for his taijutsu, but he wasn't a slouch, he came right back at Naruto with a jumping knee strike that the redhead had to quickly sidestep. At the same time, both men connected front kicks to each other's chest that sending them sprawling to the ground in opposite directions. Jiraiya went with the momentum of Naruto's kick and rolled ass over tea kettle until he was back on his feet, fist raised ready for Naruto's next onslaught. Naruto kipped back to his feet into a ready stance, he was sweating and panting but not too heavy as he eyed Jiraiya up and down, looking for a weakness. You know, you're pretty spry for an old man, Naruto said with a smirk as he started to circle Jiraiya. Jiraiya chuckled lightly with a smirk of his own. You're going to wish you looked as good as I do when you're my age. You forget I'm an Uzumaki, by the time I'm 50, I'll still look 25, Naruto said with a full-blown smile as he and Jiraiya continued to circle and inch towards each other. No one likes a smart ass, you brat. Jiraiya and sprang forward with a straight right punch. Naruto sidestepped the punch and rolled along Jiraiya's arm, and countered with an elbow strike aimed at Jiraiya's back. Still, the more experienced ninja dropped to his hands a delivered a double mule kick to Naruto's stomach sending him skidding along the ground. Jiraiya ran forward to press his advantage but was tripped up by a hand coming from beneath the ground, causing him to fall to one knee. The one second it took for Jiraiya to dispel the clone was all Naruto needed to press his advantage, he was already back on his feet and back on the attack. He stunned the white-haired ninja with a low kick to the inside of his right knee and followed it with a spinning backhand that sent the older ninja on his ride into the dirt. The toad sage recovered quickly, and the two clashed together in a symphony of meaty thunks and whacks as they traded hit after hit. Pained grunts echoed throughout the clearing as Jiraiya and Naruto continued to decimate the landscape in their intense sparring session. The two ninjas sprang apart, panting and bloody but with smiles on their faces. The smiling Jiraiya swiped a trail of blood from the corner of his mouth and spread it on his palm. Naruto raised a surprised eyebrow as he crossed his arms in an X over his chest. You're going to summon one of the toads? I thought this was supposed to be a spar. 
Naruto said in amusement. I guess I'm having too much fun. It has been so long since I didn't know the outcome of a battle that the old warrior blood is starting to heat up. Jiraiya said as he started going through the seals for a summoning jutsu. Naruto's entire body tensed as he prepared himself to go to the next level. Summoning J. Gravity seal, really? Both ninjas paused as they felt a chakra signature fast approaching their location. I guess that's the end of round one, old man, Naruto said as he dropped his arms to his side. Whoever that is just saved you a world of hurt, redhead, Jiraiya said as he stood up from his crouching position. Naruto laughed before he noticed that his godfather's eyes became serious all of a sudden. He felt his eyes had focused on his Uzumaki symbol on his right arm. Toad Gigi, is everything okay? Naruto asked, slightly wary of what was happening. His godfather instead smiled and started rubbing his white hair. Nothing Naruto just remembered something, Jiraiya lied, Naruto knew immediately. He wanted to ask again to see if he could help. Why don't you go to your home? Tomorrow is the Chunin exam, Jiraiya said with a slightly commanding tone that Naruto had never heard before. The redhead said a good day before leaving. As Naruto left, Jiraiya remembered something. Nagato, he whispered to himself, remembering his red hair. Jiraiya knew he wasn't much of a sensor without sage mode, but he could feel the similarities between Naruto's chakra and Nagato's chakra. Rinnegan, is that it? Naruto escaped his thoughts when they made it to the real exam room. They were surprised to see Kakashi sensei there waiting for them. Glad you came, Sakura, for your sake and the others, he said. Now, you can all formally register for the Chunin exam, the silver haired man continued. Why, what do you mean? Sakura asked in confusion, Well, you see, only groups of three are allowed to apply for and take the exam. That's the way it's always been, Kakashi explained. But Sensei, you said the decision to take the exam was up to the individual? Sakura asked. That's right, I did, the silver haired Jounin replied. Was that a lie? The lone Kunoichi of Team 7 asked. Kakashi turned to look out the window of the hallway. Sort of. It is an individual decision, but it affects all of you. I didn't tell you before because I didn't want the other two possibly pressuring you. At the same time, I didn't want you feeling obliged to participate because of any feeling you might have for Sasuke or Naruto. I wanted you to decide your own free will, the Jounin said. Wait a minute, do you mean if the others had come, but I decided not to come with them, Sakura paused. It would have been the end of the line. If you hadn't come along, I couldn't have let the others in. But it's a moot point. You're all here and for the right reasons. Their sensei smiled at them, I'm proud of you, I couldn't ask for a better team. Kakashi stepped aside so that his genin, hopefully, soon to be chunin, could enter the first exam room. We won't let you down, sensei, or at least we'll do our best not to. Naruto said determinately. As the trio entered the room, killing intent blasted them from too many places to pinpoint, but Naruto just pushed back. All right, let's get started now, shall we, Sasuke? Sakura? He asked casually. Sasuke smirked, while Sakura felt nervous but calmed herself, knowing they could do anything as long as they were together. Both nodded to the redhead of words, feeling their determination spiking. Right! Sakura exclaimed. Sasuke nodded in response to her teammate's words. Yes, let's do this, Team 7. He replied. That's it for Part 8. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.